every man dies. Not every man really lives. Every man dies. Not every man really lives. We are still in the Easter season. The fifth Sunday of Easter, we are still celebrating Easter. And about a month or so ago, I decided to reopen my Facebook account to reconnect with old friends and to be connected better to all of you and to spread the joy of the Lord in all the ways that are available to us in our day and age. And I came across on my Facebook feed, you know, these quizzes that they put, put out there, you know, and it said 80% of people will fail this test. And of course that grabs your attention. The headline screamed on my Facebook timeline. So I looked at it and it said, name a state whose name does not contain the letter R. And I thought to myself, what? Come on, there's Utah, Montana, Alaska, and 80% of people will fail this. <laughs> Have you noticed how many of these Facebook quizzes are just so silly? Without using another word that's popping into my head right now. Or like the one that I came across, it said 90% of people will fail this quiz. Name some made man things that you can see from space. And I came up with two right away. Two man-made things that you can see from space. One is the Great Wall of China, and the other one is Donald Trump's hair. <laughs> now, most of these quizzes are clearly designed to waste our time, clearly designed to waste time of people who clearly spend too much time on Facebook, which I hope to be not one of those statistics. But the other day, day I came across a quiz on Facebook that actually made me stop and think, and then not only did it make me stop and think, but it also made me pray. It was a link from a web page called Worldwide Hippies. Worldwide Hippies. Now, let me just make a disclosure here, okay? Let me just say that I am not a regular to regular visitor to any websites that would be associated with Worldwide Hippies, okay? <laughs> but the invitation from the web page was simple. It said Write the most joy-filled story you can think of using only four words. Write the most joy-filled story you can think of using only four words. So how do you tell a story in only four words, especially a joy-filled one? So I began to read the submission. Four words for a joy-filled story. My child was born. He loved me always. I found my joy. The cancer was gone. She achieved her dream. Four words. 
Now, my favorite had to do with food and weight loss. Red wine causes weight loss. Four words. My favorite. <laughs> Red wine reduces stress. Another favorite. Red wine increases metabolism. One more favorite. Red wine reduces hypertension. <laughs> now, the most joy-filled story, and this is what led me to prayer, the most joy-filled story in human history, the story that changed everything, the story that we are celebrating during this Easter season can be summarized and written in four words. The tomb was empty. Four words. The tomb was empty. Four words. The tomb was empty. Did you know that the passion of Jesus in the Bible, that is the way he died, you know, all the stuff that happened to him before the resurrection is described with many, many, many words. It lasts forever. You know, just come to a Good Friday service, right? Or, you know, or read the accounts in the four Gospels. Many, many, many words. But the resurrection, Easter, which we are continuing to celebrate, is described in very few words in the Bible. The tomb was empty. Four words. The women went to the tomb and found the burial cloths there. They expected to find Jesus there dead. And they expected to perfume his body. But no. Four words. The tomb was empty. Two angelic figures appeared and in Facebook quiz style, four words were announced by them. He's not here! Four words. He's not here. The two angels said, He has been raised. And Jesus said to us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He tells us in John's Gospel. We heard from John today. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the life. He is our life. Jesus is life. Which means you and I will only find joy, truth, and meaning and we will only find life if we are connected to him to Jesus we will only find comfort healing our hearts desire we will only find rest from our problems our burdens our issues all of our troubles, if we remain connected to the vine, we the branches, we can only find life if we remain connected to Jesus. Do you remember how I started today? I told you that every man dies, but not every man really lives. You want to live, you have to be connected to the life giver in order to live. Are you connected to the one that gives you life? 
Only when you are in communion with Jesus can you find peace. Whatever you are searching for, He's got it. Whatever you are hungry for, He provides it. Whatever you are afraid of, He's conquered it. Whatever is killing you, He's overcome it by rising. You see, we put God in a tomb, didn't we? But four words, the tomb is empty. Jesus Christ is risen. Now Easter, Easter isn't just a proclamation of Jesus' joy-filled life story. Easter is a proclamation of what should enable all of us, you and me, to be joy-filled in our life right here, right now. It is what should enable us to be hope-filled, to rise with Him. You see, Jesus confronted death and God would not allow death to triumph. And day by day in the story of our lives, we have to contend. In other words, every single day you have to battle. In the words of a famous poet, you have to rage, rage against the dying of the light. Every day. You have to rage against the forces of death, gloom and darkness. The forces that want to kill us, destroy us. That want to rob you of your peace. That want to take your hope away. That want to put you into depression and anxiety. You have to fight against them. In our broken weakness, often, so many of us, we try to find life in the very things that are actually killing us and killing your spirit. Stop it! Stop connecting yourself. You who are a branch to the vines who are killing you that only want to suck life out of you that are not interested in you having life stop being connected to booze and drugs and sex and porn or the casino or toxic people in your life or stop being connected to your past how many of you live in the past in your hate your grudges your anger the things you've done how many are connected to their work that is their vine And it sucks life out of you. Or you're connected to money. Or fame. Or fortune. You live the Hollywood dream. Look at all the people in Hollywood. Read up, I could mention examples here. Drug and dead. Or you're connected to your obsession with your weight and your looks. Stop being connected to the internet 24-7 or other harmful media.
connect to the vine of life connect to Jesus stop seeking life in your career stop seeking life in your possessions who only end up possessing you Stop seeking life in your busyness and being busy because your busyness kills you and it kills your relationships. How many of you say, I have no time to eat with my friends or my family, spend time with them? And then you say, I have no time to go to church and listen to one of Father Adam's short homilies if you're too busy for those things, you're too busy. You got to change things. Stop seeking life in electronic devices that make you slaves to them. All this grabs you in the power of death. Rage. Rage. Rage against the dying of the light. Dylan Thomas. Look up that poem. Rage against the terror of the night. The angels when they came to that tomb told us what we need to do but you've forgotten that's why the church has to remind you during the Easter season every year because you have a short memory we do, we have an uh, amnesia problem they told us to remember the words of Jesus if you want to find life if you want to have life in you, you have to begin to find it in the living Word of God, the angels said. In Jesus, in the Bible, in the sacraments of the church, the risen one told us where to find him. The tomb is empty. Four words, the angels declared. We can find life every time we pray every time we read the Bible every time we come to Mass every time we go to communion the tomb is empty so we can find life anytime we give these are words of Jesus I'm just repeating here every time we give every time we forgive we find life. He has been raised and the risen one told us we would find life. We would find him every time he said we feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, clothe the naked, comfort the distressed, visit the sick we would find him visiting prisoners sharing compassion with the distressed when we act right and seek justice we would find him and when we find him we'll find life the tomb is empty and Jesus Jesus told us we would find life every time we would do simple acts of service with great love like Mother Teresa taught us that we are not called to do great things but to do small things with great love the tomb is empty and the risen one told us we would find life by belonging to a community called a church by serving our neighbors so I have a question for each of you today 
He told you what to do in order to find life. So why do you continue to seek, seek Jesus? These are the words of Jesus. I'm just going to ask you that question. He told you what to do. So why do you continue to seek the living among the dead? Why? Why do you go out searching for the living, for life on the strip? You don't find it there. Or in the casino. Mm -mm. Or in a nightclub. Or among drug addicts. Won't find it there. Or on the internet. Or in sin. You won't find it there. Or in your greed, infested work circles. Or in your plastic surgeon's office. Won't find it there. Why do you do it then? You only find death there. The tomb is empty. Are you dead in there? He's not there. He's risen. What about you? You want to rise with him? Do you want to rise with him is the question during the Easter season. Do I want to rise with Jesus? And he told us what we have to do. In order to rise with him, I have to live with him. Such a simple recipe. To rise with him, I have to live with him. The women rushed from the tomb to tell the greatest, most joy-filled story ever and no matter how many words they used most of the people didn't believe them and so many of you here won't believe me either I know it but these women were not stopped because people didn't believe them and I won't be either the women knew what was true and they knew they were supposed to bring the life-giving message of Easter to others and I know that too why because my heart breaks that so many of you know that every man dies but you don't really know that not every man really lives that's why my heart breaks but my heart is also filled with peace because so many of you are being touched right now by the Holy Spirit flowing through me and these words that the Lord is speaking to you through me the Lord who wants life for you. The Lord who gave his life for you. The Lord who wants you to hear and internalize this life-giving message of Easter. See, I know that many will not believe. But it won't stop me from praying and for announcing the life-giving message of Easter to others. Will you be stopped?
the tomb is empty. Step out of it. Rise and live. Don't be a man or a woman who is alive but not really living. <laughs>